Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> these are my disclosures. Um, in this session, um, what I'd like to do is um, <clears throat> show you how uh, LIRAD's version 2017 differs from the previous version 2014. Um, and to begin, I'd like to just briefly review what LIRADS is for those of you who are not familiar uh, and why I think it's very important. Um, I'll briefly review the LIRADS organizational structure. Um, we'll talk about the various additions to LIRADS version 2017, um, and uh, we'll talk about the timeline for the future. LIRADS is a comprehensive system for standard, standardized interpretation and reporting of CT, MR, and ultrasound examinations performed on patients who are at high risk for hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, it was initiated and chaired by uh, Claude Serlin at the University of California, San Diego, who's done a phenomenal job leading this effort. Uh, it has been developed by a large committee of, um, of radiologists, pathologists, hepatologists um, worldwide. So there is worldwide input, there is multi-disciplinary uh, input as well. In fact, um, many, some of the uh, members of our, some of our international members of this society have been instrumental in helping develop LIRADS. Um, and this is uh, supported by the American Cancer, uh, the, the American College of Radiology. Now, the aims of LIRADS are several. Number one, to establish minimum technical standards for the CT, MR, and ultrasound examinations for uh, hepatocellular carcinoma surveillance. Um, and I should point out that within MR and ultrasound, there are also uh, components for, uh, for hepatobiliary contrast agents with MR and for contrast enhanced ultrasound. Um, a second goal is to standardize terminology, interpretation, reporting, and imaging management. And finally, another goal is to enhance communication among radiologists, hepatologists, surgeons, and pathologists. Now, as you all know, the appropriate choice of treatment depends very much on the accurate diagnosis and staging of hepatocellular carcinoma uh, on our imaging studies. So we play an extremely important role in driving how patients under surveillance are managed. Um, and the treatment decisions often are made in the absence of histologic confirmation. So, for example, the American, European, and Asian Pacific societies for the study of liver diseases all endorse the uh, idea that we can make a definitive diagnosis of HCC based solely on imaging if certain criteria are met in the surveillance population. Uh, in addition, the organ procurement and transplant network in the United States uh, similarly endorses this concept. So because of this, our accuracy in being able to classify lesions as hepatocellular carcinoma or non-hepatocellular carcinoma on our imaging studies um, is critical um, for patient management. Now, <clears throat> one new category for 2017 is um, non-categorizable. So this is a lesion that, um, for whatever reason, cannot be categorized, usually due to image de degradation or omission. Um, but in addition, we have the five LIRADS categories for hepatocellular carcinoma that those of you who, are, who have been using LIRADS are familiar with. And those range from LIRADS 1, definitely benign, to LIRADS-5, definitely HCC, um, with LIRADS-2 being probably benign, LIRADS-4, probably HCC, and LIRADS-3, 
uh, intermediate probability for hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, another category that's extremely important um, and seems to be becoming even more important is LIRADS M. This is a, an observation that is probably or definitely malignant, but is not specific for hepatocellular carcinoma. And the types of lesions that most commonly fall into this category are intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas and combined HCC cholangiocarcinomas. Much less commonly, it might be uh, a metastasis or some other uh, malignant liver lesion. Now, for those of you who have been using LIRADS, um, you will recall that um, we used to have a category called LR5V. That was a definite HCC with evidence of tumor within a vein, portal vein or a hepatic vein. We've come to realize over the past several years that not only does HCC invade veins, but not uncommonly intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma or combined HCC cholangiocarcinoma also can invade hepatic and portal veins. And so we've separated out tumor and vein into a separate category that is not attached to HCC or LRM. So it could be either of these, um, but that is a, a separate category of tumor and vein. And finally, we also have a, an LR treated category. So this is a, a, a lesion that was a definite HCC that has undergone local regional treatment. Now, for those of you who have been using LIRADS, um, you'll be familiar with this uh, algorithm that we have been using. Um, and this is from LIRADS version 14. Um, I'll show you the new version, which is very similar. Um, but while I have this up, I want to just point out a few important points. One is that LIRADS is meant to be applied only to uh, individuals who are at high risk for HCC, not the general population. Secondly, we can categorize by imaging a lesion as LIRADS5, a definite HCC, only if it has arterial phase hyperenhancement. Um, and we can designate a lesion as LIRADS5 only if it is at least 10 millimeters in greatest dimension. Now here is what it looks like um, in LIRADS version 2017. One big difference is that um, LIRADS version 14, 2014 was a PowerPoint presentation with links to various parts of the PowerPoint. Um, it is now a downloadable PDF. So it looks like this with a white background um, and um, these are now the LIRADS categories, which we have reorganized in an order that we think makes sense in terms of how we go about deciding what an observation in the liver uh, is. And then the basic LIRADS algorithm that I showed you on the previous um, version uh, is exactly the same. It just looks a little bit different, but it's exactly uh, the same, has the same components. So now let's look at what's new for version 2017. Well, two of the very important things that are new are the incorporation of ultrasound um, into LIRADS. Previously, it was only CT and MR imaging, um, but now we have incorporated ultrasound surveillance and contrast enhanced ultrasound for uh, observation diagnosis. Um, and these have been, um, the working group for ultrasound surveillance has been chaired by Aya Kamaya, and the contrast enhanced ultrasound group uh, has been spearheaded by Yuko Kono. Um, in addition to ultrasound, there is now a reporting algorithm, um, suggestions for how we should report observations, which ones require reporting, and what the content should be. Um, and that was chaired by Mustafa Bashir. 
Um, there is also a management working group that um, has looked at suggestions for how we should do imaging follow-up on patients with certain types of observations, and that was chaired by Don Mitchell. And we also have a tumor response uh, component that has been added, and that has been chaired by Richard Doe. Now, this is the ultrasound screening and surveillance uh, algorithm. It has three components. We can have an ultrasound negative examination. And I should point out the importance of incorporating ultrasound into LIRADS is that if you look at the recommendations of all of the uh, liver um, societies uh, for evaluating patients with uh, potential HCC, they all recommend ultrasound as the basic screening evaluation. So worldwide, ultrasound is used to a great extent as the screening evaluation. So it's very important that we incorporate it as a component of LIRAS. So we have three categories, ultrasound negative, which corresponds to a study in which either there is no focal observation or an observation that is definitely benign, a sub-threshold category in which there is an observation that is less than 10 millimeters in greatest dimension, um, but not definitely benign, and a positive examination in which we identify at least one observation that is 10 millimeters or greater in um, largest dimension, or if we identify new uh, thrombus in a vein. Now, another thing that is different about ultrasound compared with CT and MR is that we've incorporated uh, a visualization score. Uh, now, the visualization score does not impact um, the category, the LIRADS category, but it might have an impact on how we follow these patients in the future. So we have a category A where there is no or minimal limitation on the imaging evaluation with ultrasound, category B where there might be moderate um, limitations, and those are defined down here, I won't go through them, or category C where there are severe limitations. And again, this does not impact the LIRATS category one, two, or three, but it can impact how we decide to follow these patients in the future. Now in terms of management, uh, a, an ultrasound one negative examination generally uh, is followed by the usual repeat surveillance in the, um, in the usual time frame, which is six months. Um, if there is a sub-threshold examination, then we will decrease the time frame in which we repeat the ultrasound examination to three to six months. Um, and if it is a positive examination, then we move on to a multi-phase contrast-enhanced examination, um, such as CT, MR, or contrast-enhanced ultrasound. <clears throat> now, for those of you who have been working with LIRADS, you know that um, there are some tie-breaking rules that apply to whenever we're on the fence between two different categories, and, ha and we're having difficulty deciding, is it a LIRADS 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5? Um, and with, these are the tie-breaking rules for the CTMR algorithm. And in this algorithm, the rule of thumb is that we, if we're undecided, we choose the category that reflects lower certainty. So for example, if we're not sure if there's tumor in vein, then we say there's no tumor in vein. If we are not sure whether it's a LIRADS 1 or 2 or a LIRADS 2 or 3, then we go to the higher category because that's the category with greater uncertainty. If we're not sure if we're dealing with a LIRADS 4 or 5, we go with 4. If it's a decision between a LIRADS 4 or 5 HCC versus um, a LIRADS M, that is something that is not specific for HCC, then we always go with LIRADS M because that is the category that has a lower certainty for um, hepatocellular histology. 
Now, what's different for, uh, for ultrasound is that the tie-breaking rules are different. And rather than going with the category that has lower uh, diagnostic certainty, we go with the category that reflect, reflects greater suspicion. And the reason for that is so that we will move the uh, process forward to, more, uh, to make a sooner diagnosis of HCC if one is present. So if the decision is between ultrasound one and two, we go with two. Between two and three, we go with three. Now, <clears throat> for contrast-enhanced ultrasound, the categories are exactly the same as for CT and MR because this is a contrast-enhanced study that is used for diagnostic purposes um, rather than surveillance. And um, I'll point out just a couple of things about the diagnostic algorithm. It's a little bit different from the CT-MR uh, algorithm. In, uh, it is similar in that we need arterial phase hyperenhancement in order to um, make a definitive diagnosis of LIRADS 5 HCC. Um, but um, if the enhancement is peripheral, in which case it more likely is a non-HCC malignancy, such as intrahepatic phalangiocarcinoma, or if we see discontinuous nodular enhancement, in which case it would be a hemangioma, then those don't apply. But other types of arterial phase hyperenhancement um, qualify for potentially calling something a, di a, a definite HCC. In addition, it must be at least 10 millimeters in longest dimension, and it must have late and mild washout. So those are the criteria for a LIRADS-5 lesion on contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Um, <clears throat> now, another component that has been added to LIRADS for 2017 is treatment response, and this is the basic treatment response algorithm. It's very straightforward. Um, either it's non-evaluable, um, but if it is evaluable, then we have three categories, um, non-viable tumor within the lesion, um, definite viable tumor within the lesion, or a middle category that is equivocal. Um, and these are the uh, definitions for those categories. Um, and again, I won't um, go through uh, the details of the definitions, uh, but these, um, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly straightforward category. Now, there is also a reporting section that has been included in LIRADS uh, 2017 where um, the working group that worked on this um, put together some reporting requirements for each of the different LIRAD, LIRADS categories, um, as well as recommendations for the report content for each of the different categories. Um, now, uh, this, there are reporting recommendations for both untreated observations, and here are the reporting requirements and recommended content for treated observations. Uh, another very important component that has been added is a management component. And within the management component, um, we refer to these as suggested imaging workup options and time intervals because one thing that's important to keep in mind about the management of patients with uh, HCC is that um, although imaging to a certain extent drives patient management, it is not the only thing. And there are many other important factors that are taken into account when we determine how a patient is managed, including the patient's liver function, social issues, comorbidities, et cetera. So, um, so although we can make some suggestions, we can't make guidelines or recommendations that are specific for each of the imaging findings, 
because many other factors are taken into account in how these patients are managed. So um, these are the um, general recommendations for, for observations that are untreated, and then there is a series of uh, suggestions for imaging follow-up on patients who um, have treated lesions. Now this is the organization uh, of LIRADS. Um, it is overseen by a steering committee of about 25 members um, who uh, review all of the potential content that will go into LIRADS, any changes that will be made. Um, and there is input from the American College of Radiology staff and also from the Society of Abdominal Radiology HCC disease focus panel. And then within LIRADS, there are a number of working groups. Um, and all of these working groups are very, have, are very important and provide the content for all of the different components of the LIRADS algorithms. Um, and I, I'm not going to go through um, any of the images. Um, that would be much too much to, to incorporate in this talk, but, uh, but there is an atlas and a lexicon that goes along with all of the information within LIRADS. Um, so it's, it's fairly easy to navigate through links within the PDF. Um, now, the timeline for the future of LIRADS um, looks like this, <clears throat> and um, it will change. But as you can see here, the last major version of LIRADS was version 2014. Version 2017 came out this year, and as we've discussed, tumor response, ultrasound surveillance, and contrast-enhanced ultrasound, among some other things, have been incorporated into this new version. Um, the next major version is planned to come out in 2020. Um, and one of the new major components that is planned for that version is a radiology pathology um, correlation um, component. Um, now, although there won't be another major change until 2020, uh, it is planned that there will be interim clarifications and corrections as new information becomes available. Um, we'll, changes will be made to the, li minor changes will be made to the LIRADS algorithm uh, as we go forward. So with that, I'd like to uh, acknowledge Claude Serlin, the chair of the LIRADS uh, steering committee, uh, who's done a phenomenal job in moving this effort forward, uh, and Cynthia Santian, who um, has been uh, helping him at UCSD uh, as well. Uh, and I thank you very much for your attention.